We humans are omnivores. That means we can eat meat, plants, and whatever they make boba out of. That stuff is delicious. But with millions of things on Earth's menu, 75% of the calories we humans eat comes from just five types of animals and only 12 types of plants. And that might be dangerous. Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM Loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. There are over 50,000 edible plant species on Earth, but humans primarily eat just a dozen. And actually, about 50% of the calories humans eat comes from just three crops, rice, corn, and wheat. Shout out to my cereal grains for keeping us fed. I really liked your work in, uh, cereal. The other big plants are sugarcane, soybeans, potatoes, palm oil, and cassava. There's also sorghum, millet, ground nuts, and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, when you crave potatoes, but sweet. When it comes to animals, humans consume most of our calories from chickens, pigs, cows, buffalo, and the greatest of all time, goat. <laughs> Just those plants and animals make up three-fourths of our diet, which makes it easier for things like supply chains. But there are some big downsides as well. First, it's not great for our health. The top four plants, corn, wheat, rice, and sugarcane, are low in protein and high in carbohydrates. They're also often heavily processed, which can remove things like fiber and nutrients. It's also not great for the health of our farmland. Planting the same crop on the same land over and over can deplete the nutrients in the soil. Over time, plants on these farms will need more and more fertilizers and pesticides, both of which have serious effects on the farms themselves and on the surrounding environment. Growing our food like this puts the health of our food supply in danger. We've invested a lot of energy maximizing the efficiency and yields of certain crops, which helps feed our always growing population. And just like shrinking biodiversity is bad for our overall environment, shrinking biodiversity in our agriculture has big risks. Because when you rely on a single crop for food, you're in big trouble if that crop develops a disease. Up until the 1950s, the main banana we grew was a different variety called Gros Michael. Oh, sorry, it's French. I meant Gros Michel. The Gros Michel banana was bigger and sweeter, but a fungal infection known as Panama disease wiped out banana plantations around the world. The resistant Cavendish banana was grown as a replacement, but guess what? Panama disease is back and it has evolved, hitting banana plantations in South America and Africa. Even with all of modern science, we might be facing another banana blight. Can you imagine a world without bananas? That would be bananas. But it's not just bananas. Between 1845 and 1852, a potato blight hit Ireland, a country that heavily relied on a single species of potato. This great famine changed Ireland forever. Millions fled the country, and an estimated one million people died. As climates change and temperatures fluctuate, the crops and animals we rely on most are under pressure from more than just disease. There's evidence that rising CO2 levels could make our current crops less nutritious. Plus, larger and more frequent storms and heat events could affect livestock populations. Between 1900 and 2000, 75% of the world's crop varieties have disappeared. And these aren't obscure fruits and veggies. We're talking different species of coffees, grapes, cows, gone forever. Okay, so what can we do? Because we can't stop eating. It may sound simplistic, but a solution to growing too few types of foods is to grow more types of foods. A wider variety of crops would help insulate our food supply from environmental problems or disease, maintain soil nutrients, and reduce the need for fertilizers and pesticides. There are grains like fonio that can take the place of cereal crops or ube that can take the place of russet potatoes. Governments and organizations are aware of the dangers that come with low agricultural biodiversity, and some steps have already been taken. For example, California has an entire Office of Environmental Farming and Innovation, and the European Union is literally paying farmers cash to go organic or diversify their crops. Talk about a cash crop. There's so many great foods and crops to try. And by expanding our palate, we may help change the world. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. 
And if you want to watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.